Okay, team, here's what's been happening on Ghost Rider. The facts. First, the Galaxy Girl TV show came to Brooklyn. Gabby was totally psyched, because she's Galaxy Girl's number one fan. She wanted a Galaxy Girl costume to wear to the show, but she didn't have any money, so she took some from her parents' store. And that's when things really started to go wrong. Galaxy Girl's spaceship was stolen, and the thief left a threatening note that had blue smudges all over it. Then everyone found out that the money was missing. And then Gabby found the stolen spaceship hidden in her toy chest. She got really scared. She didn't want anyone to think she stole cutesy, so she hid it. But someone broke into her room and took it. Then, Lieutenant McQuaid found the Galaxy Girl costume and a strange object with blue smudges on it, just like on the threatening note. Now, here's some new facts from the last show. First, the strange object turned out to be part of the missing spaceship. We know you were involved in the theft of cutesy. Gabby admitted she took the money, but... I didn't take cutesy. Lieutenant McQuaid doesn't believe her. Don't make me take you down to the station. So... Gotta help Gabby. They don't have much to go on except the blue smudges. There were a lot of people dressed up as mockers yesterday, and the blue makeup they're wearing could have rubbed off on the note. Calvin and Jeffrey were dressed as mockers, so that makes them suspects. We've got another suspect, too. Brett Pierce. He's an actor who's mad because he got fired from Galaxy Girl. And while Alex and Tina were figuring out a clue from Ghost Rider that meant the thief likes to eat at Buddy Burger restaurants, their casebook was stolen. Meanwhile, Gabby's having nightmares that she's turning into a Makva. No, Makvas do the opposite of what they say and tell lies and try to confuse people. Then... Bring $50,000 to the corner of Smith and Warren Streets tomorrow at 4 p.m. or you'll never see Cutesy again. What's going to happen to Cutesy? And can the team get Gabby off the hook? Get a pencil in your casebook out and keep track of the clues because things are getting really tense now. What about Gabby? Is she off the hook? How can she be? Didn't you just say that she's Galaxy Girl's number one fan? That big mouth just got Gabby into more trouble. Don't blame yourself. We've got to get Gabby off the hook. You're right. I got to catch up with McQuaid. What about Calvin? You guys take care of him. I can't let McQuay get away. Remember, we're mockers. Choose to confuse. You don't have to say a word. You think we stole cutesy, am I right? How'd you know? <clears throat> GW told us. What's uh, GW? Come on, homeboy, don't play dumb. Gabby told us all about how GW can read and find things. You know she's the brains for this whole operation. She made up the plan to steal Cutesy. Why would you help Gabby steal? For information about GW. You are such a slimy liar. I'm going to tell Lieutenant McQuaid you admit you stole Cutesy. We'll see who goes to jail. No, no, please don't. I'm not a thief. Good morning, you pal. Back off, Booger Bat. If you want to save yourself, tell the truth. We didn't steal Cutesy. We made the whole thing up when we saw our names in the suspects list. What suspects list? The list in Alex's case book. Calvin took it. See you around, Calvin. Not if I see you first. You better stop messing with us, Calvin. You can't win. Have a nice day. How did Lieutenant McQuaid find out that I'm Galaxy Girl's number one fan? I, uh, I guess I told him. I'm sorry, Gab. I was just trying to help. I know. I just don't want to go to jail. You won't. I promise. By the time I get out of jail, I'll be old and mean and have long hairs growing out of my nose. Gabby, go to sleep. At war, she can bring peace. And Piper Ball, Galaxy Girl. <laughs> Admit you're a Machva. Be glad you are back. Never. You already live by Machva law. Number three. 
lie to get by. No. Yes. <laughs> after you stole the money, you told lie after lie to hide your crime. Now everyone knows you can't be trusted. Can help me. Because you're bad through and through, you are now completely blue. <laughs> Recite the laws of Makra. Say yes, do no. Choose to confuse, lie to get by. Now that you're one of us, you can enjoy what Makvas have hungered for since the beginning of time. Eat the key. Eat the key. Alex? I'm all alone. Nobody trusts me anymore. It's all my fault. I feel... so badly. I pretended I was only borrowing it. Yeah, that's what happened. I stole the money. I started lying to keep it a secret. But then when I wanted everyone to believe that I didn't steal cutesy, it was hard for them to trust me. And that's what hurt the most. Because I felt like I was all alone. Dear Mulan Papa, I'm very sorry I stole from you. I wanted the costume so badly, I pretended I was only borrowing the money. 
I've learned how lonely it feels when no one trusts me. I hope you will trust me again. Love, Gabby. This is what I wanted to say all along. You're not a moth bud just because you made some mistakes. You only thought you were turning blue because you felt bad about what you did. And we're your friends, so we forgive you. Because the third law of hyperbole is... Don't say it! Everyone, everyone deserves, deserves a second, second chance. chance. Am I blue? <laughs> not, not anymore! <laughs> How lonely it feels when no one trusts me. I hope you will trust me again. Love, Gabby. Of course we'll trust you again. I was afraid you thought I was bad. Nosotros sabemos que tú no eres mala, Gabriela. But what you did was wrong. Stealing is breaking the rules that we all live by. And you can't break those rules just because you want something. When you take someone else's property, you hurt them. Even if you don't know them or never see them. I promise I'll never do anything like that again. Perdóname. Te perdonamos, Gabriela. Thanks. But the money you stole will be taken out of your allowance. And you're still grounded for the rest of the week, huh? But your friends can come see you for one hour each day. Thanks. I love you guys. <laughs> Where is Mr. Barron taking the money? It's almost four o'clock. I think we're lost. It's corner of Smith and Warren Street. Well, I know we're in the right neighborhood. I'm not going to jail. I'm going to fight back. What do you know about the thief? Well, he was probably wearing a Magva outfit because he left blue fingerprints all over everything. And he was small enough to fit through the air vents at Hurston. Hey. Slide your boot up the chute. When the Magvas were facing the wall, they said something about boots and chutes. Wait a minute. The vent that they climbed through is on that wall. Maybe they meant C-H-U-T-E, shoot. Like that game, Shoots and Ladders. Yeah. The inside of a vent is like a chute. Were they kids or adults? I couldn't tell. They were dressed like Makvas. They could have been twins for all I know. Hey, Lenny and I read about these twin kids who invented Galaxy Girl. Abigail and Jordan Jefferson. How'd you know that? I'm Galaxy Girl's number one fan, remember? And I read the same article. Eighteen-year-old twins, Abigail and Jordan Jefferson, have gone where no kids have gone before. The two Ohio high school seniors have created a new science fiction series, Galaxy Girl, and sold it to television. Hey, they're from Ohio. Wait, the Buddy Burger receipts. Yeah, 
Tosh something Ohio. Tosh something? Oh, that's Kashakton. How do you know? Genius. <laughs> so the Jeffersons stole cutesy? Wait a minute. Ohio's a big state. How do we know that the Jeffersons came from Kashafton? Well, it says here they went to John Dewey High School. Let's ask Ghost Rider if he can find out what town that's in. Smith and Warren, we're here. Yeah, but where is everybody? <laughs> Come on, Ghost Rider. I know we're right on this one. He's back! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Gail and Jordan Jefferson must be the ones who stole cutesy. They really are Galaxy Girl's number one fans. Galaxy Girl was their idea. But why? Why would they do this to me? Look, I'm sorry we scared you. But you guys walked into the middle of what could have been a very dangerous situation and you could have blown our cover. We didn't mean to. We were only trying to help Lieutenant McQueen. Well, the drop-off is about to begin, so just stay down. Let's proceed. Money picked up now. Oh, oh. Vanessa, over there. Larry, Larry. The money there. You, go, go. Manuel, I'm gonna help. Back there. I'll go tell the team what happened. <laughs> uh, everything's gonna be okay, Mr. Baron. You can wash the blue off the money. But what do I have to do to get my cutesy back? What do I have to do? I still don't understand why Abigail and Jordan Jefferson didn't just take the money. Yeah, they must be weird. I mean, didn't the first note say something about foul freeze box? Yeah, that meant that the producer should wait in Hurston for the next note. But the note was delivered to his hotel room. Then they asked for ransom and didn't even show up to get the money. Very confusing. That's the point. Huh? Abigail and Jordan Jefferson don't only dress like Makvas, but they also do everything the Makva way. Yeah. They're probably already back in Kishakton, Ohio by now. We'll never catch them. Hey, something's up with Ghost Rider. QTC 5000 has been destroyed. We will not return to the found freeze box. The game begins. Ghost Rider must be reading another note sent by Abigail and Jordan. I'm copying it down. If we can figure out what this note means, 
Maybe we can find QT. QTC 5000 has been destroyed. We can't rescue QT if he's been destroyed. But what about the game begins? I mean, if they're really returning home, why is the game beginning? Wait a minute. Magnus always do the opposite of what they say, right? Let's take another look at the note and figure out what the opposite of each sentence would be. Then we'll know what Abigail and Jordan are really up to. Okay. QTC 5000 has been destroyed. So the opposite is... QC hasn't been destroyed. He's safe. Then, if they say they won't return to the foul freeze box, then the opposite would mean... They're returning to the scene of the crime. The stage at our school. I'll go to Gabby and Alex. Come on, to the stage. <laughs> there he is. Wow, cutesy. See, we figured the note out and we found him. There's no breeze in this room. So? Cutesy's swinging back and forth like someone just finished hanging him. Well, where are they? Maybe they climbed to the vent, like when they stole him. So they'd be in the computer room. We'll call Lieutenant McQueen. Let's go. Get him. The police are on their way. Don't try to escape. We won't. That's... I promise. We're Abigail. And Jordan. Jefferson. Ah, uh, do you always move and talk like this? Since we were born. We've never been apart. No one would play with us. Because we were short. So we played together. By making up stories. What we lack in height. We make up for in... Imagination. Ah, uh, is that how you created Galaxy Girl? Yes. yes. Why'd you steal cutesy? Because we were cheated. Con. Hoodwinked. Ripped off. Flim flammed. Short. Changed. Uh, we get the picture. We never showed anyone our stories. Until we published them in our high school newspaper. Everyone loved them. We had friends. friends. And one of them. Barbara Barron. Showed them to her father. A television producer. Bruce, Bruce Barron. Barron. <laughs> he bought the rights to all of our stories. For $25,000. But we never got another dime. And all the millions went to. Um, why'd you sell them so cheap? Because we were very poor. And we wanted to go to college. Didn't you fight it? We've had many, many, many lawyers. And he's had many, many, many more. So after years of losing in court... We decided to get our revenge. The Makba way! It's too bad you stopped writing your stories because you got cheated. They were great. We never stopped writing Galaxy Girl Adventures. We just hid them away. Ah. Uh -huh. Lieutenant McQuaid, I'd like to drop all the charges against the Jeffersons. As you wish. Ah, <laughs> my little friends, all is forgiven. With your great new stories, we'll make Galaxy Girl the most popular kids' show on TV again. <laughs> Does this mean Gabby's off the hook? The case is solved and she's free and clear. <laughs> I owe you kids a favor, big time. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Alex is supposed to walk me home. Does he kiss you goodnight at the door? <laughs> Gabby. <laughs> Ghost Rider, we're in the middle of a game. Rally B? No one's name on the team begins with a B. Número uno. Ay, 
You really Galaxy Girl? See, si. My real name is Rita Rivera. Galaxy Girl is the character I play on TV. Galaxy Girl, have I got a story for your show. Really? Yeah. You see, it all starts when Galaxy Girl is about, oh, let's say, nine years old, like me. Mm-hmm. Go on. Well, she steals money from her parents. <laughs> so she can buy this outfit she really, really wants badly. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, Galaxy Girl starts turning blue. <laughs> Exercise your head. Read. Ghost Art is brought to you in part by Nike. Additional bucks that keep our team supreme come from public television viewers like you and me. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting. The John Dean Catherine T. McCarver Foundation. The Pew Charitable Trust. And the U.S. Department of Education. But you can't say it all in breath. I bet you can. Ghost Rider was originally produced for the Public Broadcasting Service. Read more about Ghost Rider and the Ghost Rider team in these Bantam books. To purchase Bantam books, video cassettes, or a teacher's guide for programs in this series, contact GPN, P.O. Box 80669, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68501, or call one 800 228 4630.